May God be lifted in your life and may you be lifted through and in God. Welcome to Be Lifted. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Let's close our eyes, please. I want you to speak to the Lord this morning that you want a special touch of his power upon your life. You have come here one way and you do not want to go home the same way. Talk to the Lord yourself now. Before you do any other thing further this morning, talk to the Lord yourself. He's here and his power is in this place. Talk to him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. May the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord God bless you real good. He brought you here to bless your life. May the Lord God be- Point to somebody and shout it loud. Real good. Real good. Turn to another person and shout it loud. to the envelopes and declare this loud and clear. My father arise for my sake and let my story change in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it loud and clear. Masepiali katenda Ripo sependa kaya boko shentera basanta. Let my story change. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say every arrow assigned to suppress me. Backfire. In the name of Jesus, send back the suppressing arrows. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Papota setendi kaya bo shenderaba. In Jesus' name, we pray. Powers assigned to send me to hellfire. Can you shout this loud? You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Makate setenda kaya bo shendera basampilaba. In Jesus name we pray. Monitoring my destiny. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Speak against the dark mirror. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. That wants me to die. Destroy yourself by fire. In the name of Jesus. In 
Jesus name we pray Holy Spirit be my comforter Holy Spirit take control hallelujah as I walk along the way the way Possibility possible. He made impossibility. He over Jaira. He over Nisi. He over Shama. He over Rohi. He over Shama. He over Nisi. Your hand. Your hand. Your hand. I've been to Calvary. I dip my hands in the blood of the Lamb. I drink the blood of Jesus. My life has been made. I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. Hallelujah. My life has been made. Oh Lord. My life has been made. Oh Lord. My life has been made. Oh Lord. Shara, Oni Shaya, Oni Shara, the Lord. Oh, yes, oh, yes, Oni Shara, Oni Shaya, Oni Shara, the Lord. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, where they have King Gapo. Oh, 
Onishara, Onishaya, Onishara, the Lord who Say what I'm going to say now after me. Say, my father, I come to you in this month. I know that you care for me. I decree by the decree of heavens that wherever I go this month, bad luck shall flee. Tragedy shall disappear. Favor shall envelope me. I decree this in the name of Jesus. A seven fold amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We praise your holy name for your mighty hand of power and strength. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, lay your hands upon us this morning. Open our understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Let's open our Bible to Matthew chapter 26. As we look at what I call the tragic sleep. The tragic sleep. There are plenty of things happening around us now. Horrible things. Things that didn't used to happen before. If you deeply look at all these happenings, you find that there is a call, a wake-up call to Christians to wake up from their slumber. When believers sleep instead of praying, when the battle of the bed has overcome us, the normal method of the Almighty is to introduce a shock treatment that will wake people up to their responsibilities. Please open your Bible to Matthew chapter 26. I read from verse 36. Verse 36. Matthew 26, 36. If you are there, say yes. Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And he said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. One songwriter says, if Jesus had to pray, what about me? And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will. But as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them doing what? Asleep. And he said unto Peter, What? 
Could you not wash with me one hour? Could you not pray for one hour non-stop? That's the question. So as far as Jesus was concerned, it was a kindergarten spiritual experience to pray for one hour. So uh, what? Yes, one hour? You cannot pray for one hour? So watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time. And praying said, oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, that will be done. And he came again and found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy. May you not sleep in the camp of your enemies. And he left them and went away again. And prayed the third time, saying the same word. Then commented to his disciples and said unto them, Okay, let's sleep now. Take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed unto the hands of sinners. Rise up and let us be going. Behold, is at hand that doth betray me. He tried to make them pray to avert the problem that was coming. They did not do that prayer. And all kinds of things now began to happen. The failure of the night prayer will always show up during the day. A lot of Christians have been found to sleep by the enemy. Many present day believers have been completely caged by what you call the battle of the bed. And one thing you need to receive deliverance from, if you must be a champion for God, is the battle of the bed. You must win it. There is physical sleep, there is spiritual sleep. Now in Luke chapter 9, we see a very another this same strange phenomenon. Luke chapter 9. I read from verse 28. Luke 9, 28. Please follow this chapter very well. Because before because of our time, we are going to stop very soon. But I want you to get this main point. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. If you are there, say yes. And it came to pass about an eight days after these things. He took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Moses appeared on that mountain. Elijah appeared on that mountain. The Bible calls it the mountain of transfiguration. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. And the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles. One for thee, one for Moses who has already gone, one for Elijah who has already gone to. Not knowing what he said. Because he was sleepy. While he does speak, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. Listen very carefully. Jesus took a selection of three disciples to a mountain to have a unique appointment with Moses and Elijah. Those old time saints they've read about and they would definitely love to meet. If I announce for you that next Sunday Moses and Elijah will be here, there will be no space to put everybody there. And they climbed a mountain to have this encounter. It's not easy climbing any mountain. For those of you who have climbed mountains before, but these disciples went through the rigor of climbing that mountain of transfiguration. And after struggling and struggling to get to the top of the mountain, they got there only to sleep. They were not awake throughout the experience. And they've been awake throughout that experience. There might have been two more chapters in the Bible to cover what took place that day. So the only thing they wrote down in the Bible for us that we're reading now is what they saw when they woke up. All the other transactions are taking place while they were sleeping. Listen, beloved. Being in the place of God's glory is not all. But being awake while encounters are going on is more important. Remaining awake is as important as the effort you put in to get there. That's why it's a major tragedy if somebody comes to church on Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, and he's sleeping there. You can go to fantastic meetings. You can attend camp meetings. You can rush to the mountains. 
but merely being on that mountain with Moses and Elijah is not as important as whether you got the blessings they were there to give. The blessings that made you to come to that mountain. Many go to powerful mountains, but how many of them come back home with transfiguration experience? When Peter now woke out of sleep, he made an offer which meant nothing. The Bible says he was saying it out of sleep. It came out of his sleepy semi-consciousness. Hey, let us have three things here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. This is the case of many, beloved. Sometimes they are awake out of a great sleep at a great meeting. And suddenly decide that their voices must be heard. Sometimes they even prophesy prophecy out of sleep. They are in an anointed environment, but they are speaking from sleep rather than from the spirit. The third chapter I will not read because the children have already told us that when the, wife, the foolish virgins slept many years ago, there was a man called Napoleon, a warrior who conquered practically everywhere. The first time Napoleon saw the map of China, he said, there is a sleeping giant. He said, this place, these people, they are a sleeping giant. Let him sleep because if he wakes up, he will shake the world. That was the prophecy of Napoleon close to over 200 years ago. Looking at it now, it makes sense. The China has woken up and is shaking the world. Today, Lucifer is surveying our lives. The way Napoleon surveyed China. You can see the fear in the eyes of Lucifer. As he thinks of the potential and power you will exhibit. If you decide to wake up. You could see the fear in the eyes of the enemy if you decide to wake up. The reason the enemy is not afraid of men is that he has found them to sleep. He has found them to sleep. And that evil sleep is a sleep we must pray out of our life this morning. It was many years ago, I think it was 1996, a woman from this church was promoted to a very top position. She was number five or so, they just moved her to number one. And one man who felt he should be in that position was bold enough to enter into our office and to tell her, look, madam, I'm supposed to be here, you are here. You will not last seven days here. And the woman said, as the God of Elijah lives, you, there is nothing you can do. I did not campaign for this. I did not I bribe anybody. God gave it to me. This is, the office was in Marina. Marina. No bush, no forest. All of a sudden, one morning, as she was sitting on her seat, she felt something cold was touching her leg. She looked to see a large snake crawling under a desk like this. When she saw it, she did not want to cause attention. She pressed the bell that summons a messenger. So the messenger came in and she was telling the man, look down, look down. When the man looked and he saw the size of the serpent, he ran out, banged the door, leaving the madam with the serpent. At that level, the fire she has gathered here took over. She looked straight at the serpent and said, by the power of the God of Elijah, I command you to be electrified. She said as she was saying that, that those terrible eyes of the serpent, she could see shaking their fear and the snake stretched out and was electrified there by the power of God. They dragged the snake out like that. We need to arise out of our present spiritual paralysis. The present spiritual sleep that most Christians are sleeping. Consider Samson again, beloved. Samson did not get drunk. Samson did not commit murder. Samson did not steal. He simply fell asleep. That singular act of sleeping at the wrong time put his enemies in charge of his life and put him in the enemy's cage. Before Samson could fall asleep on the lap of the enemy, a spiritual slumber had already started in his life. That singular sleep that Samson slept put him in the cage of the enemy, blinded his eyes, made a false god popular, scattered the forces of the living God. Beloved, this it is it is unfortunate, but this is true. This our generation is the most prayerless generation since the church of Jesus Christ began. We will rather do entertainment, we will rather dance, we will rather do bonanza and harvest than to engage in heartfelt, hell-shaking prayers. So our major problem is still the problem of the garden, the problem in the garden of Gethsemane. Sleep. 
spiritual sleep. When your bed is more powerful than your prayer altar, you are sleeping a dangerous sleep. When you are always oppressed in your sleep, it is a dangerous sleep. When the spirit of slumber has taken over your spiritual life, it's a dangerous sleep. When you oversleep, you are sleeping 8 to 10 hours a day, it's a dangerous sleep. When you are unable to fight back in your dream, they are attacking you there, you cannot fight back. Never in your dream have you pursued the enemy, never. Rather, the enemy is always pursuing you. You are sleeping a, a dangerous sleep. You are attacked in your dream, and then you wake up with physical manifestation on your body. It's a dangerous sleep. Let me be honest with you now. This is why some people sleep and never wake up. When you are pressed down on your bed, the, the fact that they could even come and touch you, and they are pressing you down, it is a dangerous sleep. When your pillow does not give the visions of heaven, like this man here, who made stone his pillow, and then was seeing visions of heaven. But your own pillow is showing you visions of demons and horrible nightmares. It's a dangerous sleep. When all your sleep becomes a battlefield, it's a dangerous sleep. When you sleep, you, you, when you slept, there was no problem, you were hale and healthy. Now you woke up, now you became a sick person because of sicknesses planted in that sleep. Then it's a dangerous sleep. The Bible says, while men slept, his enemies came. While men slept, his enemies came. Any sleep that a noise does not wake up, it's a dangerous sleep. Any visionless sleep, it's a dangerous sleep. Sleeping in church services, it's a dangerous sleep indeed. We need to bind that spirit. We need to repent from the sin of prayerlessness. We need to make our place of prayer uncomfortable for sleep. The Bible says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. The Bible makes us understand there is danger in evil sleep. I'm here to warn you about it today. There are six dangerous sleeps in scripture. One is the sleep of Samson. The sleep of presumption. I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a pastor. I've gone to Bible college. I have a degree in theology. My father is a catechist. I have a, a prayerful husband. I have a prayerful wife. So you sleep of a sleep of presumption. The Bible talks about the sleep of the sluggard. The sleep of the sluggard. The sleep of lazy ones. And that sleep too is a dangerous sleep. The Bible talks about the sleep of weariness. That too is a dangerous sleep. The Bible talks about the sleep of one man called Eutychus, who was sleeping when Paul was preaching, and he fell down and died, which is known as the sleep of death. The Bible talks about the sleep of the foolish virgins, a sleep of perdition. The Bible talks about the sleep of Jonah, deliberate and disguised sleep of suicide. Beloved, the truth is this. Many are engaged in spiritual and physical sleep. Many are sleeping away in a seemingly quiet atmosphere, whereas there is a raging wild wind around them. The church is not a dormitory for sleepers, it's an institution for workers. The church is not a resting camp, but the frontline battle trench where battles are fought to the admiration of the devil and his agents. Believers are either consciously or unconsciously snoring away in this sinking ship of the world. They are sleeping amongst iniquity. This is a wake-up call for those of us whose spiritual life is nothing to write home about. Your life is not on fire. Your quiet time is not on fire. Sometimes you don't even do any quiet time. You rush out in the morning and rush back in the evening. Any believer who does that is like a danger waiting to happen. This morning, there are some prayers to pray. It says, wake and wake out of thy sleep. While men slept, his enemies came. And the enemy will plant all kinds of things and go away. Rise up on your feet, beloved. Rise up on your feet now. There are prayers to pray here this morning. If you must overcome the challenges of this present world, and if you must fulfill your destiny, you must overpower the power of the bed. You must receive deliverance on spiritual slumber, spiritual slumber and physical slumber. This is a very, very serious matter. And I want you to know 
that all men who go somewhere with God, they won the battle of the bed. Anyone who sleeps for 10, 10 hours a day is never really fully awake to this world. Because there is a lot of things you are missing out. All eyes closed. Whether you feel you are concerned, or you are not concerned, I recommend that you pray with all your heart. Especially if you suffer oppression in your sleep. Or you find that once you just sleep, no vision, no dream, no nothing. You just sleep like a log of wood and wake up like a log of wood. People talk about night vision. You don't have any night vision. People talk about visions of the night. You don't know about visions of the night. You find that when you have a very good spiritual activity to do, that's when you fall asleep. It's a dangerous sleep indeed. You will shout this loud and clear. Don't allow anybody's voice to overshadow your voice. Sleep of death. Program into my bed. You don't understand the prayer. That's why your voice is not loud. Can I hear you saying it again? Let your voice be louder than that. Jesus. Jesus. Ma pota sente la kaya bo shende ra bo sete la ka. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Jesus then we pray as we pray this next prayer something will begin to happen to 21 persons don't 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 panic whatever happens to us I pray this prayer say farmers of the night can you shout that loud planting evil seeds into my life Jesus, farmers of the night, planting the wood seeds into my life. Da. Jesus, receive the torture of the power of God. Receive the torture of the power of God. Receive the torture of the power. Receive the torture of the power. In the name of Jesus. Then we pray. If you are that person there, you remember clearly that somebody told you that you will not make it. You remember clearly. Somebody said that to you. And it is manifesting. It is manifesting. <laughs> if, you are the, if, you are the, if you are the person, just quietly find a way to the altar and be on your knees. Somebody issued that curse against you. You can remember the person who said so. And you can see the manifestation. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Pronouncements of the night against my destiny. Can you shout it loud? Your voice is not loud enough. Can you say it again? Backfire in the name of Jesus. Backfire, backfire, backfire. But se pati la katanda. Yes. Open your mouth, open your mouth. This is not a day to negotiate. Aha, 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 aha. Papata sapala katanda. Da ribo sapanda kaya mo shenteraba. 
Open your mouth, open your mouth. Enough is enough. Every plantation from the marine world, every plantation from the forest, every plantation from the sea, every plantation from the forest, every plantation of evil, out. Go back to your senders in the name of Jesus. Jesus, then we pray. The Bible says, while men slept, his enemies came. Sisters, say this after me. Say, the enemies that came in my sleep. Can I hear the sister shouting it? Your voice is not loud enough. Brothers, can I hear you shouting it? You are a liar! Damn! In the name of Jesus! Open that mouth, open that mouth! Aha, aha. They are coming out, 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 they are coming out. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. Silence. Father, your power is the absolute power. And you have never failed your people. Father by the masses of heaven and by the power in the blood of Jesus I come to you now and I commit unto your holy hands anyone, anyone in this service now that there is an unconscious plantation unconscious seed of darkness or even conscious ones inside the body planted by the Luciferian farmers of the night whether they are from the waters whether they are from the seas whether from food from the enemy's camp, Papata, Libo, Caponde, Keda, whichever life they are now, I address you in that body because it is reason that the strangers shall be afraid and they shall fade out of their close places. Now, in the name which is above all names, you deposit of darkness, get out of your hiding place in the name of Jesus. Get out, 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 get out
the words of man shall not prevail over your life thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus father i pray for this person over there that is suffering from cobweb attacks you the spirit of the cobwebs catch fire in the name of jesus you will now shout your name the louder the better then you will issue a command to your spirit man daniel olukoya hear the word of the lord wake up in the name of jesus open your mouth and decree Jesus, the satanic hashela, bana katenda ya boshente raba, the ketese piali katanda, mana katende ya boshente. Speak to your spirit man. Speak to your spirit man. Speak to your spirit man. Jesus name we pray we're coming back to that prayer I stop it because of two people a man and a woman the power of God will fall upon you where you are and a personality will walk out of your body these two people a man and a woman please let that be silence yeah? your parents dedicated you to serpents and those serpents have been controlling your life right there where you are the two of you, I bind the cobra spirit, I bind the python spirit. Let's go. Vomit him, vomit him now in the name of Jesus. Now this prayer, my katenda raboshente, the sea le katenda. That somebody, <laughs> if you pray this prayer well, this week will be one of the best week in your life. <laughs> Say my wealth <laughs> stolen by the powers of the night. <laughs> Is that the Lord that you can shout it? Your voice is not loud enough. Your voice is not loud enough. Shout it again loud and clear. Shout it again loud and clear. I'll recover you now. In the name of Jesus. Recover. Recover it, recover it, recover it, recover it. Something is happening. Begin to recover, begin to recover. Recover it. In Jesus' name we pray. A seven for the man. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit all your children who have come to this service unto your holy hands.
The Lord blesses you from Zion. And he makes his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. Your going in your coming out shall be blessing. The Lord shall be your nail in the sure place. Everywhere you go, the fire of God shall be your dispatch rider. The glory of Jehovah will envelope you. Your success shall be great. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Your coming to this morning service will bring you mighty testimonies. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.